Hello, and welcome back. In today's tutorial, I'm going to explain you about a new function in Excel called let function. The main purpose of the let function is to simplify a complex formula, so that the formula becomes easier to maintain and modify, and it also makes it easier for other users to understand. To understand the logic behind the formula, I will use a simple representation to explain the structure of the let function. For example, let's say we want to calculate the area of a rectangle. So, we have to define variables for this rectangle such as length and width. And, we can use the area formula to calculate the area of the rectangle. Let us use the let function for this example. We can define the variable names and provide the value for each variable. After we define the variables, we can define the formula to calculate the area of the rectangle. This is the basic concept of the let function. The let function not only set the abbreviation for text or numbers, but also be used to define the range in the table. For example, here I set a table for recording the student marks for each subject. Let's assume that I want to count the number of students in the class. I just need to use the counter function and select the student name column in the brackets to get the total number of the class. Let's assume, if I want to calculate the class average for the mathematics subject, I just need to use the sum function to add up these scores and divide them by the total number students of the whole class. Let us use the let function to calculate the class average for the same subject. First, we can define two variables here. The first variable is the total number of students and the total score of the mathematics subject. Finally, we can define the expression, dividing total score by the total number of students. As evident from both methods, the class average in the mathematics subject remains the same. However, employing the let function offers enhanced clarity and facilitates a better understanding of the formula. If the formula in our table has a repeated function, then using the let function can show its advantages and convenience. For example, assume the scoring criteria like, if a student's average score is above 85, they will receive an A grade. If the score is 70 or higher, they will be awarded a B grade. For scores below 70, the student will receive a C grade. In general, to calculate the average of the four subjects for this student, you can use the average function. And then, we use the ifs function to determine which grade his grade falls. However, in order to match the average function in the three conditions of ifs, we copied it three times. Hence, we might use the let function to narrow down this formula to make it look better. Let us define the variable as average, so that we don't have to repeat the average function over and over again. In the calculation argument, we shall use ifs function, but with the defined variable. Based on this feature, that can omit repeated functions, when we have huge data at hand, Making good use of the let function can improve the speed and performance of function processing. But the let function can create up to 126 groups of names. Okay, finally let's look at an example to see the dynamic array function of Excel. How to use the let function to make the formula table more dynamic. The objective of this example is to determine the total salary of the salespersons based on their sales incentives. According to the incentive criteria, if a salesperson achieves sales exceeding $10,000 per month, they will receive a 1% commission on the total sales value. This commission will be added to their basic salary to calculate the overall monthly salary. Let's begin by exploring the conventional approach to tackle this example. To begin, we will transform the data ranges into a table format by using the shortcut key control plus T. This will help us organize and manage the data more effectively. Next, we'll employ the unique function to extract the distinct names of the salespersons and populate them in the salesman column. To calculate the total sales for each salesperson, we'll use the sumIf function. This function allows us to sum the sales values based on specific criteria. As per the predefined incentive criteria, we will determine the incentive amount for each salesperson using the if function. Next, I will list the basic salary for each salesperson. Finally, by combining the incentive and basic salary, we can calculate the total monthly salary for each salesperson. This will provide a comprehensive view of their overall compensation. Let's proceed with calculating the total salary using the let function. 
As discussed earlier, we will start by defining the necessary variables and the corresponding values. The first variable we need to define is the total sales per salesman. We will use the sum if function, similar to the traditional method. As you can see, converting the data table into table format enables faster the selection of ranges and development of complex formulas. Next, we will define the second variable for the sales incentive. And I will use the if function by applying the incentive criteria to define the incentive variable value. It's important to note that we can use any defined variable multiple times within the formula. In this case, I used the total sales variable to calculate the value of the incentive variable. Finally, we will define the calculation section by adding the basic salary and the incentive, and then press enter. To handle any error values, we can use the if error function. By utilizing the let function, we can reduce the number of calculation steps required and achieve the desired outcome with a single formula. We can remove any additional calculation columns to simplify the report. The let formula will automatically update itself whenever there are changes made to the data entry in the data table. I trust that this tutorial has provided a clear understanding of the let function. I will be sharing additional examples on utilizing the let function to simplify even more complex formulas. If you have any questions regarding these tutorials or any problems that can be solved using the let function, please feel free to share them in the comment section below. I look forward to addressing them in future videos. Have a wonderful day.